Well, I think we always need more studies. I, I, I take a slightly different point of view that we do know a lot. And we do know what, I think, for most people, an optimal way of eating and living is. And um, in all of our studies, we use the same intervention. It was a whole foods, plant-based diet that was naturally low both in fat and in refined carbs, uh, moderate exercise, stress management techniques, and love and support. And we found in all of our studies, and it wasn't like there was one set of dietary recommendations for reversing heart disease, a different one for diabetes or prostate or gene expression or telomeres. It was the same intervention for each of these. And the more people changed, the more they improved. There's this reductionistic tendency in science to try to want to like parse out, you know, what is this particular constituent? You know, the, you know, I debated Dr. Atkins many times before he died, and you know, he got pegged as the low carb guy, and I was the low fat guy. And my work has never been just about any one thing, and it's and it's not even just carbs versus fat. There, there are inst new studies coming out showing that animal protein itself may be harmful. There was a study that came out. Uh, by Levine in uh, cell metabolism last March, showing that people who had a lot of animal protein had a 75% higher risk of premature death from all causes, a 400% increased risk from uh, all forms of cancer, and a 500% increased risk of type 2 diabetes, independent of the fat and, and the cholesterol. And also, I've you know, been in, 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 in these debates with Dr. Atkins or people who followed him, um, or there have been studies done comparing a so-called Ornish diet versus a, an Atkins or equivalent or paleo or these kinds of diets. And they'll say, well, you know, the cholesterol levels weren't that different and the weight loss wasn't that different, so kind of eat what you like because it doesn't really matter. But if you actually look at what happens in the arteries, it matters a lot. Mm -hmm. And there was a review article by Stephen Smith in the New England Journal of Medicine a few years ago where they actually showed that on a whole foods plant-based diet, like I'd recommend, the arteries are essentially clean. On a typical standard American or SAD diet, in every sense of the word, they're partially clogged. And on a high animal protein, uh, high uh, carb diet, excuse me, low carb diet, they're severely clogged, even though it wasn't necessarily reflected in the risk factors or the weight changes. They're mediated through what are called non traditional risk factors, things that most people haven't heard of, like endothelial progenitor cells and other factors like that. So it's important when looking and asking these questions first to actually look at the bottom line, not the intermediary biomarkers, but the actual disease process itself. We've shown using quantitative arteriography, cardiac PET scans, radionuclide ventriculography, thallium scans, cardiac events, that people get better. And to the degree they make these changes, there's a corresponding improvement. So I would hate for people to come away from this session thinking like, oh, these damn doctors, they can't make up their minds to help them just you know, bring out the bacon and eggs and don't worry about it. When in fact, while there's always more research to do, and the microbiome, as David mentioned, is particularly interesting to me because of how dynamic these changes can be measured. We know quite a lot already.